Even for giving the nine seconds a black screen, this logo takes up 34 seconds for one goddamn studio. Thanos supposedly kills half of a people he encounters. So is this half of what was left of Asgard? Because it looks like a whole lot more. I'm also wondering, since Asgard lost so many at the hands of Kate Blanchett in Thor Part 3, does Thanos update what constitutes 50% population of a planet? Or should we give him a pass since he couldn't possibly know the devastation Asgard just went through? The Tesseract. Or your brother's head. This two hour and 30 minute incomplete movie where Thanos locates all the Infinity Stones is only necessary so that Thanos can snap half the universe's population to death. Just so he can be lazy. All this trouble he's going through to find Infinity Stones. He could have traveled planet to planet and did this job faster. Like six years ago when we were introduced to him in the first Avengers. We don't have the Tesseract. It was destroyed on Asgard. If Thor doesn't send Loki down into Odin's trophy room at the end of Thor the Third, does the Tesseract survive it and float around in space? And does Thanos' quest end when he realizes he can't possess the space stone? Does the snap only produce impotent sparks at that point? It's a hypothetical, I grant, but I'm sending it anyway. We have the Hulk. Why does Hulk hold back during the battle while Thanos destroys the Asgardian ship until the end when Loki says we have a Hulk? What the f*** was he doing before then? Thanos destroys Hulk with only one stone in his glove. Later, with many stones in the glove, his punch will be held by super angry Captain America after going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Iron Man on Titan for a good bit. And the power distribution slash comparisons in the MCU have never felt more squirrely than in this movie. Also, where's Valkyrie? Valkyrie should have at least been shouted out in this movie. Thank Odin Valkyrie got half my people away to safety, is all Thor had to say later. Just who the f*** is this guy? We've sat through 18 goddamn films, and if I'm remembering correctly, 75% of the MCU has been Thanos bitching about traffic on the freeway, and we haven't once been introduced to these powerful f***s that follow him around or why he needs them. Find them, my children, and bring them to me on Titan. Sure, put Infinity Stone Retrieval in the hands of your henchmen. That worked so well in the 39 other movies. Didn't you literally grumble, fine, I'll do it myself? Oh no, Loki's gonna die, again. Like in Thor The Dark World, which definitely means he's probably not dead. And even if he is, I'm sending it anyway, because that Dark World scene did not get sinned enough. Thanos is coming. In previous movies, we were told Hulk and Banner have different memories. So how does Banner remember shit the Hulk alone knows? Tony Stark, famous Avenger, is running around Central Park and nobody's bothering him. This guy is more famous than any president or celebrity in history. Tony Stark. Do normal people see this sh While I know New Yorkers are up on their Avengers knowledge, I'm not quite so sure they've been informed about the masters of the mystic arts. Big banks and six elemental crystals hurtling across the virgin universe. If the universe is infinite, or at least close to it, then these stones were sent in directions that should have guaranteed no one could ever combine them all. Just based on sheer math. Also, why six? Two weeks ago, Vision turned off his transponder. He's offline. Okay, if he had a fucking transponder and knew it, he wouldn't have waited until two weeks ago to turn it off. So this is some bullshitty bullshit here. Cap and I fell out hard. We're not on speaking terms. Really? What was that letter Cap sent you at the end of Civil War then? He specifically said, if you need me, I'll be there. All these dudes are superheroes and they all sense something sinister is happening outside. But instead of instantly leaping into battle, they take several seconds to gape like children at the strange noise, like dickheads. The alien ship causes Peter's spidey sense to go off, and Homecoming didn't give us any indication spidey sense even existed. And now this movie is just thrusting it on me like, well, almost like they forgot it was a thing and are only now implementing it. I need you to cause a distraction. Holy <laughs> We're all gonna die! Ned, you are a treasure. Maybe none of the classmates on the bus see Peter do this, but plenty of other drivers and passengers on this bridge do. And in the age of smartphones and dash cams and government surveillance, this transition was definitely seen and captured on film and Peter's cover is blown forever. What's the matter with you kids? You've never seen a spaceship before? Yeah, sure. They've seen a spaceship and it usually means bad things. I've seen a tornado before. That doesn't mean that when it happens, I'm going to sit on the bus reading Madame Bovary. Bring me the stone. Dude, a minute ago you were making metal fly with a flick of your wrist. Why do you even need the futuristic space app? do to do this for you. I need a concentrated effort for a second. Bruce's Hulk transformation troubles become an impotence metaphor. And does that mean when he's successful, it's like he's a huge green boner? And what does that say about his character? That he can only become erect when he's angry? This is the most embarrassing Mark Ruffalo's been since In the Cut. I realize that nanobots are legit real world science, to a degree, but Tony Suit is applying it in ways that make it utterly unbelievable. Here's some shit we definitely won't use later when it could sway the fate of the universe. I mean, there are much more important and dangerous hands that this can be used for to cut off in this film. Unlock 17. Thank f***ing God Stark had pre-designed and built and voice programmed for deployment a space-worthy Iron Spider-Man suit in the, I'm guessing, a few months since Spider-Man Homecoming? Friday, send him home. Yep. Um, why didn't the suit just fly him back to wherever Tony wanted him to go? If you're telling me that the suit doesn't fly, then why doesn't it? If the suit does fly, then there's no need for the parachute send-off, especially if you've got Friday controlling it. 
<laughs> Somehow after that massive battle that ended in that one park, Banner retraced his steps and found Tony's phone in the rubble. Like a needle in a haystack called and thinks you're making this too difficult. Well, this is 100% definitely not a reaction to CinemaSins complaining about text place names and movies being used when they're unnecessary. This is 100% definitely not a reaction to CinemaSins complaining about text place names and movies being used when they are unnecessary. Of all the retro references to make, Groot is playing Defender. What a f***ing infuriating video game. Why is he even playing ancient Earth games anyway? Aren't there modern alien games to download from the nebula? That Thor is convenient and illogical, but I do love Fig Newtons. After that encounter with a sudden new alien being, Groot is still playing handheld video games. There comes a point when a parent's got a parent, and clearly no one aboard this ship ever did that. So Groot ends up like that affluenza kid in Texas, and everyone around him acts like, Oh snap, he's such a bad seed, why didn't anyone do anything? He's anxious, angry, he feels tremendous loss and guilt. So basically every single American then, or even every human, aren't we all anxious, angry, and feeling lost these days? Mantis's empath revelations are more obvious than Forrest Whitaker's in Species. Who the hell are you guys? That's an awfully rude way to greet people you don't know. I once woke up in this room and this dude tried to do all this gnarly shit to me with these strange tools and I was like, who the hell are you? And he said, I'm your fucking dentist, asshole. Dr. James Packer DDS was tough, but fair. Thanos retrieves another stone. He'll be too powerful to stop. He already is. How exactly did they expect to stop Thanos, who doesn't even need Infinity Stones? to be powerful, but already has two of them. Plus, Thanos needs Gamora to get the Soul Stone. Keeping Gamora away from Thanos is strategy 101, but because there's no time, they hastily conjure up some no-ass plan. <laughs> Vision and Wanda are supposedly on the run and hiding out from, I guess, the government, but this apartment or hotel room is large as f this looks like a honeymoon, not a couple on the lamb. Romancing the stone! Also, they went from kind of maybe flirty to kissy face hotel buddies and deeply in love. Entirely off screen! Look, this is the f***ing MCU. I refuse to believe anything is an accident, and I'm losing sleep trying to unravel the meaning of we will deep fry your kebab. Is it a promise? A threat? A guarantee? A cipher key? The sign is taking up way more screen space than Wanda's face. It has to mean something. How the f*** did that alien assassin sneak up on an android without being heard or seen or sensed? The play. It stopped me from facing. That's literally the only explanation this movie's gonna give for why the two most powerful Avengers end up needing help from some punchy fools like Black Widow and no longer Captain America. Wanda is hand-to-handing this henchman. She's a magic witch that fooled all the minds of the Avengers with false visions of awful futures at once. Why does she have to throw her mind powers at people? Why did Cap need to make a dramatic entrance into this scene? And why on the other side of the tracks? Why isn't he helping already? And in the time it took both Scarlet Witch and Proxima to figure out who it was, either of them could have potentially won the fight while the other was distracted. <laughs> Audience applause break. <laughs> Guns. These henchmen failed to get the stone they were sent after, and they peace out to save their own skin. And I'm pretty sure even they know that Thanos values the stones over his henchmen. So what the fuck are these minions thinking, bailing out like this? Stay close, check in, don't take any chances. We just wanted time. You know, to figure out the whole having sex with a synthetic vibranium body thing. It's a lot tougher than you'd think. I hope Thanos is keeping count during all this disorder and chaos, because I can't figure out how many are dying at first glance. But I'm sure he knows how to keep the death at halfsies. What's wrong, little one? The fact that Thanos would ever have stopped on his kill quest for even a moment because of a cute kid is a big pill to swallow. You're quite the fighter, Gamora. She asked a question. That's it. She's displayed zero fighter characteristics. She's inquisitive, confused, scared, guileless, but a fighter she is not. This half-genocide scene illustrates a curious character detail in Guardians of the Galaxy, when they told us Gamora was the only survivor. If Thanos gets me, I want you to promise me you'll kill me. One other thing you could do? Just find a distant planet to live on, lay low, find a cave, maybe find Spock, and don't allow Thanos to ever get near you. Swear to me on your mother. Movie characters think that a promise will be a bond if they swear on a loved one, but of course it doesn't work that way, cliche. I realize she has a hate boner of justice, but goddamn, what was she thinking? She's the one that's been reminding others how f***ing powerful Thanos is. Premature self-reprobation. You knew I'd come. I counted on it. So he assumed that the Guardian ship would get the distress signal from the Statesman. They'd follow it. They just so happened to run into Thor. He'd tell them about the Reality Stone and that she would agree to come here? This is f***ing impossibly brilliant. He didn't even tell Thor he'd be coming here. He just told his minions to get the two stones on Earth and meet him at Titan. The only reason he pulls the trigger here is because the movie knows it's going to undo the act and keep Gamora alive for now. His love for her and dopey puppy dog nature 100% does not jive with his willfully pulling the trigger here. Why do Drax and Mantis go back to normal when Thanos leaves? The stone powers aren't proximity based, but somehow the damage he did was only temporary. This is a hologram of Ross, whose physical body is in a completely different room somewhere in the country. And yet he's able to walk around this room, like he's physically in 
this one. Is he in a replica room with a virtual reality display? And if so, there should be a camera somewhere in here tracking his eye movements so he can face the right way when he's talking to people, right? No one in this movie should own a Rickenbacker bass and have it displayed on a floor stand in some kind of library. This guitar is the biggest lie the MCU ever told. I've played one of these. Tell me, Congressman, have you ever played a Rickenbacker bass? Where's the fight? Bucky. Are we just gonna gloss over the fact that a Stark shoulder missile from Earth easily blasts a hole in the hull of this alien spaceship? The hell is this spray stuff Tony's using here to seal the breach in the ship's hull? Nano magic? Canned convenience? It's magic whiz and it's cheesing me off. Way to introduce a new character in the movie in the 19th film of a franchise and completely kill him off in an hour. Darth Maul and Ebony Maul are now in some seventh circle of movie franchise hell, where they were told they were special and mull their fates with Maul Flanders at the Hades Mall. So I say we take the fight to him. Granted, the ship you're on is going to him, and you haven't stated declaratively that you can turn the ship around, despite being asked twice by Strange, maybe this is less of a choice than the movie or Tony wants to make it seem. Your planet was on the brink of collapse. I'm the one who stopped that. Do you know what's happened since then? I don't know. Has 50% of the planet multiplied and brought it back to pre-Thanos population numbers? I guess you plan on snapping the universe back to half its people every 20 years or so? This seems so f***ing pointless. Don't do this. Marmir! Ultimately, sisterly love is what causes her to give up the location of the Soul Stone, and therefore the fate of the entire universe. She begged her boyfriend to kill her, rather than let Thanos win. And I'm getting a new hammer. In Thor 33 and a third, Odin told him his hammer was just something that focused his power. Now that's been forgotten, and a hammer is important again. You're gonna need more than one stupid eyeball. But you're handing him a fake eyeball. So he still only has one stupid eyeball, right? What the f***? Some random computerized alien eyeball has a connection port that matches Thor's flesh-based eye socket connection port? So This is a second Marvel movie to waste Peter Dinklage. And he killed everyone anyway, all except me. Let me do some math here. 300 dwarves were here, one is left, carry the 9, multiply by pi r squared, that's 99.67% of the dwarf population. Which means he must have let 299 other dwarves on some other hammer building station live. That's all well and good, but how did she get out of the mid-air suspension thing that she was in? Doesn't that thing make you, for all intents and purposes, immobile? In fact, I'm kind of wondering how she was even able to kill that guy. Wind up implanting eggs in my chest or something and I eat one of you, I'm sorry. I do not want another single pop culture reference out of you. I'm trying to say that something is coming. Really? Because there was absolutely nothing urgent about what you were saying at all. In theory, it could even summon the Bifrost. Because why not? Thor's gonna have to get to Earth faster than a ship can take them somehow. So bake in the Bifrost into this baby and we're set. What are the odds a far-flung planet moon like Titan would have air breathable by humans? So wait, at the end of Captain America, Red Skull touches the Space Stone and is sent into space to be a sort of keeper of the Soul Stone? It really just seems like a reason to shoehorn Red Skull back into the story more than anything that makes sense. Guiding others to a treasure I cannot possess. Are you saying you've had a lot of people looking for the Soul Stone since you got sent here in 1945? What happened before you were here? Was Warren G. Harding guiding people back then? Soul holds a special place among the Infinity Stones. Why? You might say it has a certain wisdom. But why? The stone demands a sacrifice. Why does the Soul Stone require so many more parameters to acquire it than any other stone? It's like the original creators of the stones themselves said, Okay, if you're powerful enough to hold the other five gems, we'll let you change reality, move across space at will, increase your strength, and harness the most powerful energy in the universe, go into the past and the future, and access other people's minds. But when it comes to controlling all life in the universe, that's where we draw the line. Dude's got kind of a thing for bubbles, I see. I feel like the sacrifice of Gamora would have played a lot better if Thanos had been given his own proper origin film, and if we'd had more reason to suspect his love for her. This death is sad, until you realize that A, the Time Stone will end up figuring into her coming back to life anyway, and B, that despite all the problems since the firing of James Gunn, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 was ready to go into production after this movie. What the hell happens here? He kills her, the weather gets weird, a flash, and suddenly he's in a pool of water with a stone? How and where is there any water here anyway? It's like an ice dimension with snow. Is he not on Vormir anymore? I'm actually so confused by this cut, I suspect the next movie might hinge in some small way on it. But whatever. It's still a weird cut location change in the movie, and I shall sin it. Something's entered the atmosphere. Just one line about how Thanos or something with the stones tells him exactly where each one is would be f***ing terrific. It didn't help him at all with the Soul Stone. He needed Gamora to tell him that. So why the precision knowledge with the others? These ships hit the Earth at massive speed. I don't understand why they don't do to the planet what meteors that large would do, like in Deep Impact or Age of Ultron. 
And yet, they don't. They just cause little fire ripples and loud noises. This battle at Wakanda doesn't make a whole lot of strategical sense. Thanos already has enough stones to wreck these Earthlings on his own. He needs Vision's stone. That's basically the only reason he sends this army. Feels like we needed something action-y to do with a bunch of our characters that didn't make the trip to Titan, and we came up with this. I'm gonna hold it open. That's suicide. So is facing Thanos without that axe. Okay, dude, you f***ing had a magical hammer made by this guy at this place, and your sister smashed it like it was chocolate. I take offense to the idea that an axe from here could defeat Thanos and the fact that it nearly does. These Star Wars-esque kid-style troop transports are super inefficient in that only 20% of their surface area can hold troops. <laughs> Look at that distance between the shield and the Wakandan troops that everybody, including Natasha, just traversed in three seconds. And that pissing match confrontation at the shield was 100% unnecessary to the story and the battle. Oh good! Just what I wanted to see in this giant Marvel movie. Swarms of easily killable CGI monster clones. Thanos could easily just do the job right now, but why do that when you can reenact Braveheart? They went to the trouble of showing him getting a Wakandan-made vibranium arm, and in battle all we really see him do is fire a machine gun. I'm no War Machine fan, but this shit looks hella useful, and he should just do that all battle long. We open the barrier. In order to keep the aliens from going around and flanking them, they open the f***ing shield barrier directly in front of them. And honestly, it's one of the most baffling military decisions on film since Denzel started firing on friendly tanks and courage under fire. Why not leave Cap and you and Falcon and War Machine here to get the stragglers getting through one at a time and send the entire rest of the army to the back to fight the alien foot soldiers? I love how they both leap in here punching, like they somehow know these aren't aliens with poison skin or acid blood. There are frogs here on Earth that have poison skin. Also, say, why didn't Thanos staff his army with aliens that had poison skin or acid blood? A bunch of whatever. If Thor can withstand the energy of a star, then what can kill him? It's almost like this movie is saying all that stuff that could have killed Thor in the other movies. Well, forget all that, because he can take the brunt of a star's energy, because this movie really needs him to. Groot finally looks up from his video game, and don't tell me it's because he cares about Thor. The movie just needs him to get involved here in a second. Teenagers do not act moody for a long time and then suddenly sacrifice a limb for a creepy stranger they bumped into a couple days earlier. I think he's dying. He needs the axe. Why? He's not the god of axes, is he? So now he and the weapon are one because he helped create it. I thought he and the hammer were one, but ultimately that hammer didn't matter. And he didn't help make the hammer either. My point is these movies give zero fucks about how the magic space weapons wielded by gods work or don't work. Audience applause break. How the f*** did Thor know where to go once he got his new axe? Why'd he go to Earth instead of Titan? Why not New York or Norway? Thor doesn't even know Wakanda exists, does he? Bad CGI floating head Bruce gives me nightmares. And when we faced extinction, I offered a solution. Genocide. But random, dispassionate, fair to rich and poor alike. You know what would be awesome, since the death snap doesn't discriminate, if it killed Thanos too. Imagine Thanos actually deciding for the greater good that he could even die with such a snap. But guess what? You don't have the balls for that. With all six stones, I could simply snap my fingers. They would all cease to exist. Why though? Why a snap and not an okay sign or salute or a middle finger or the shocker? I feel like with just the four stones he currently possesses, he could easily end this fight right now. The guy can currently manipulate all the energy in the world, reality itself, and let's not forget control all life in the universe with three of those stones. Don't let him close his fist. What? He can't use the stones if he doesn't close his fist? Since f***ing when, movie? And f***ing why, movie? Honestly, for a bunch of all-powerful when they're combined together magic space gems, the infinity stones are super restrictive. <laughs> That punch somehow doesn't kill Peter. God damn, that was a punch. This f***ing guy. How can all these superheroes be so emotionally wound up to make the same fatal mistake when they hear about losing their loved ones? Yeah, sure, it's within his character to do this, but I'm sending the movie that this is the reason why Thanos escapes. Mantis is thrown several hundred feet away from Thanos, Spidey reacts to this, and apparently can jump said amount of feet before Mantis lands. Well, he finally answers the question I have never asked about what happens when a film character uses a Bruce Almighty Moon as a projectile. And I've gotta say, I should have asked this question years ago. But also, everybody survives the moon's meteor shower, so you can see the bind I'm in. I know we like him, and she loves him, but honestly, kill his ass and destroy the stone, you idiots. The universe is at stake. Not once during this battle do we see if they're making any real progress against these CGI nothings. Just a bunch of quickly edited fights that act as filler until Thanos gets here. Sure, it's kinda cool to see Bucky pick up Rocket and perform a 360 death ballet, but in the end, who cares about this stupid army? It's like watching the Harlem Globetrotters beat the Washington Generals while Michael Bay coaches both teams. After Thor's arrival where he Thunder Groot axed everyone, seeing him punch foes one at a time here makes me wonder why he doesn't just keep doing that first thing. You heard okay? Notice you've copied my beard? Good thing there's no one to fight for a few seconds so we can have a humorous exchange about hair. F***ing dicks. 
was she up there all this time? Because Scarlet Witch was there to destroy the Mind Stone if Shuri got it out of vision. Jeez, lady, who do you think you are? You're worse than cinema sins. I'm not saying I like the Wakandan battle rhinos. I'm just saying they would have been super useful in this battle. <laughs> vision ex machina! He should be vomiting magenta computer code at this point. But somehow he has the strength to stand, grab a weapon, and kill a fool. Come on, movie. Have just 25% more consistency, damn it. Holy sh! This fight between Strange and Thanos is, first of all, amazing as f. I'll take off two sins for it. But also, it's so evenly matched for so long that it makes the group fight against Thanos that came before it seem silly and wimpy and underwritten. So Iron Man's shield can apparently withstand that. Good to know. It's not like these stones are the most powerful f***ing objects in the universe or anything. Cap, that's it. <laughs> like, that arrival needed some kind of narration or verbal confirmation. I understand my child better than anyone. You could never. If we're about to see a reenactment of Spike Lee's old boy here, I'd only like to see one specific scene. The Soul Stone is the only one to demand a sacrifice so you understand its power. But the Mind Stone is the largest one and takes up the leader position of all the stones in the glove. Honestly, should anything be able to defeat that glove right now, let alone a new axe that we only just learned about? We now interrupt this Avengers movie to bring you a special presentation of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, starring Josh Brolin as Dumblemore. Here comes the part of the movie where the snap of death plays a game. Who's gonna live and who's gonna die? And apparently, it takes its time picking and choosing, because all the dramatically relevant deaths wait for each other so we can see them all, rather than happening at the same time. Also, his gun stays solid, but the new vibranium arm turns to dust? <laughs> While it's distressing to see your favorite characters wasting away, don't you just know they're all going to be back? This kind of death scene is reminiscent of Twilight Breaking Dawn Part 2, where the movie stages a free-for-all with death galore, only to show us that it was a vision. Like a new chapter of Final Destination with sexy vampires. It has emotional impact as an idea, but absolutely none because you know it will be reversed. There was no other way. Glad you could mention this just before you waste away into nothing. I hear the snap loves letting people have final words before they go. Geez, did Thanos move out into Camazots or whatever the f that was in a wrinkle in time? You know what that means! Chris Pine is gonna complete the Chris Quadfecta in Avengers 4! Woohoo! I guess it's a good thing Nick Fury always carries around his Captain Marvel X Machina pager with him wherever he goes, and that the snap waited for him to use it. Flop, flop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is! Is that what I think it is? Mm hmm It's beautiful. The power of the sun in the palm of my hand. You got knocked the f out! In order to take the stone, you must lose that which you love. I love poetry, and a glass of scotch, and of course, my friend Baxter here. By the power of Grayskull! Behold the Underman! 